Johnson's Paint Trophy final, 2-2. After Doncaster took a two-goal lead in the first half, in the first five minutes, Jonathan Fort and Paul Heffernan. Bristol Rovers back in it in the second half with two goals after a penalty. Richard Walker converts. And then Sammy Igo makes it 2-2 with just under half an hour to go. Finish that way after 90 minutes. We're about to go into extra time. Fantastic day here at Cardiff. We really enjoyed it. Where's your money now, Dave? <sighs> Good question. Um, there's a few tired legs coming out there now. It depends how the subs come on and how they affect the game. You know, they've got Nicholson to come on for, for Bristol. Lewis guys just come on for Donny. So, um, I wouldn't like to say to before for honest with you. <laughs> I'm going to sit on the fence. I'll stop you there because we're about to go into extra time. I think Rovers will win. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Burles and Bill Leslie. The 24th Football League trophy final, the fourth that has required extra time to separate the two sides. I do like a bit of indecision there. <laughs> Doncaster, the side from League One, a side that thought they'd done the hard work in the first five minutes of the 90. And if they did, they miscalculated the spirit and belief in this Bristol Rovers outfit. Whatever happens to them, it has been a sterling fight back. But of course now they want more. Both sides chasing history here at the Millennium Stadium. There can be only one winner. Hal Day. Still he's got energy. And at this stage of the game, that's the only way to stop him in the eyes of Brian Stock. Might well have earned himself the second yellow card of the afternoon in the process. Yeah, deservedly so. Just wonder if he could have stayed on his feet there, Hal Day. Taken by Carruthers, looking for Disley, not finding anyone. This is Hinton. And the one thing you think is going to set in now is fatigue, not only in body but in mind. Doncaster players must be thinking, well, how's it got to this? 2 0 up inside six minutes, and if they feel like that and think like that in extra time, they'll get beat. It's going to be strong of mind and they are the better side from a higher league and they can go on and win this in extra time. One little factor that might come into it at this stage is uh, the fact that uh, Bristol Rovers played in the week, whereas Doncaster had a full seven days to prepare for this. Who knows? Here's Haldane. Just can't get away from O'Connor. Completely fair and very good challenge. He stuck to his touch really well, O'Connor. Here's what he's up against, a very fast, direct winger, who looks shattered. How long can he keep making those sort of searing runs? And a bit of cramp setting in as well, not the first or the last time we'll see that from any number of players out there. Energy sapping, mentally and physically. Still 17 and a half minutes to be played, and that's before the potential drama of penalties. Delivered by the captain, Campbell, Disley Rose. Can get the power to beat Sullivan. They look good in the air, didn't it? Good delivery, attack well. Just gets half a mark, half a yard, straight at Sullivan, good positioning. Lewis Guy just drifted offside. A couple of substitutions made by uh, Sean O'Driscoll and Doncaster already one in force because of that uh, injury to Jason Price, of course. Yet to uh, play a hand, though, Paul Trollope, still with the uh, same 11 that started the match. And the same 11 that played against Wickham on Tuesday. Is going to go to penalties. Who your penalty takers are, you can't. You don't want to take your, your main men off. Doncaster have lost two strikers already. Forte's gone off. Price has unfortunately carried off with that snapped Achilles. 
And from Bristol Rovers' perspective, the man who scored a penalty for them already in regulation time, Richard Walker, he'd probably be the most likely to make way if they were going to send on Stuart Nicholson, the online striker from West Bromwich Albion. So plenty going through the minds of both managers down there in the Cardiff sunshine. The flick from Guy was intended for Thornton. Haldane. I go. Very congested in the heart of midfield there. This is Coppinger. Lovely little spin there from Coppinger. It's green for Doncaster. Touched by Phillips and taken right away from danger by Lescott. Well, what a good strong hand there from Phillips. Lovely little build up. Tired ball by Stock, really, wasn't it? Maybe a few of those in extra time. I go. Still seemingly able to operate with full reserves of energy. And how close did they come here, Doncaster? Well, Coppinger does really well in this build-up. Just checks inside, lovely little turn, lovely threaded ball through. Green does well, gets a bit of power, and you think Heffernan will be there on the spot just to tap it in, but defended by Bristol Rovers, aware of the danger. Heffernan into the path of Guy, Coppinger. Green now, retired first touch from him. Disley, looking away, possession. Trying to feed it through to Heffernan, that was Stock's intention. The shout was handball from the Bristol Rovers fans, I think Stock thought it was, he just stopped for a minute. Disley. is Lescott, much slighter bill than his brother Jolian, hasn't it? Everton centre-half, former Wolves player, of course, here's Walker. Lescott. Craig Disley, as the decision goes against him. Just under 60,000 people here at the Millennium Stadium, all of them on the edge of their seats. Just about halfway through this first period of extra time. Substitutions brewing for Bristol Rovers. Strong by Elliott. Lee. Had his pockets picked by Sammy Igo. Just exhaustion there, wasn't he? Tired. Both sets of players to do anything at the moment. Well, they gave so much, didn't they, Bristol Rovers, to haul themselves back off the ropes after going two down in the uh, opening exchanges. What do they have left in the tank? Here's Haldane. A slip at the crucial moment and more cramp. I'm surprised. Uh, people are trying to get in support of Alde, it's difficult with that pace. Stock and Green. Coppinger. Guy, one of the pairs of fresh legs out there. They're going to have a run at the Bristol defence. Thornton. 
McDade. Four red and white shirts waiting for the delivery. A delivery that doesn't come. Kept alive by Lockwood. And in comes Igo. It's going to be a free kick from that challenge by Lockwood. And they're going to use this break in play to make two substitutions here, Bristol Rovers. Andy Sandal is there. He's going to come on for Sammy Igo. Igo, whose contribution cannot be underrated in the second half. And Richard Walker. Scorer from the penalty spot. And he's replaced by Stuart Nicholson. A popular decision among the Bristol Hawks here in Cardiff. This is the key. Bristol Rovers now, fresh legs going in towards the second period. Experience out there. Brings more than just fresh legs, though, does need Stuart Nicholson. Brings some real pace to test the tired rear guard of Doncaster Rovers. And an injury that's kept him out of the uh, last couple of games and a little bit of training in the week, but he has got three goals in his last three games. Campbell. Helped on by Elliott, still very much alive for Bristol Rovers here. And that could have gone anywhere. The bar angle, that little his goal bound. A well-worked free kick, headed intelligently back into the danger area. Gets good contact, well wide from this angle. Good header across, strong. Good early take here. Just can't hit the target again. Final change for Doncaster Rovers. The former Manchester United youngster, Mark Wilson. Middlesbrough player as well. You might remember Steve McLaren playing one and a half million pounds to take him up to the Riverside Stadium. And he comes for Brian Stock. That's the substitutions completed for uh, Doncaster. Coppinger. Intelligent ball in by Coppinger, teasing it so close towards Heffernan. Sean Thornton. Heffern. Lockwood. I'd just like someone to win this in extra time, wouldn't you? That is an awful way to lose a final. You know, somebody has to lose whatever happens. But I want to see some sort of strike. Piece of magic moment win this game rather than the lottery and Bristol Rovers already felt like they won the lottery when they drew Bristol City aware a rare Bristol derby in the uh, southern final not only drew against them but beat them over two legs Nicholson beaten in the air by Lee. This is Heffernan starting to show his lack of match sharpness. Those seven games he's been on the sidelines now. He's done remarkably well to last as long as he has done. Elliot. 
And Campbell still battling away Heffernan. Just as you'd expect, Hal Dane, who's switched across to the right-hand side since the introduction of Andy Sandler, who's playing a cross on the left. Lambert. Haldane. Possession wrestled back by Doncaster Rovers. Heffernan. Green. O'Connor. Good movement from Coppinger. Guy tracked all the way by Hinton. Lee, Green, one minute added on to the first period of extra time here. Wilson. Sean McDay to Sean Thornton. Green showing for Thornton. Edging their way forward here, Doncaster. A little bit of nervousness creeping into the Bristol Rovers supporters behind the goal. So a little bit of nervousness even more. There's plenty around the Millennium Stadium this afternoon. Has been right since the off. Lescott. Lockwood well positioned to block, but he couldn't prevent the corner. Lescott well, certainly seemed to have a lot of running left in him. They didn't utilise him as well as they could have done going forward. I think he thought that the throw had been given when in fact it was the corner, so across comes Campbell to take it. Back goes Lescott. Up goes Elliott. Well, well into injury time here. One final chance, perhaps. Big Steve Elliott, who scored from this sort of situation against Wickham in the week. No chance to get ahead of that, because O'Connor got it clear. And we are at the end of the first period of extra time, the same as we were at the end of regulation time. Doncaster are unable to hit the heights that they did in the opening exchanges, those two early goals in the first five minutes, which made many of their supporters think the job was done. Forte and Heffernan. And Sean O'Driscoll's boys are up against some real League Two battlers here with no small amount of skill as well. Back they came, Walker from a penalty won by Igo, and Igo himself rattling in to make it 2-2. Two -two. Well, you sure saw the fatigue in the first half of extra time there, mentally and physically. You expect it physically, but it's the mental fatigue that causes mistakes to be made. I'm sure that could be a way through for either of these two teams. One defensive lapse, one lack of concentration, you're out of the game. So near, but yet so far now. Paul Troller, very highly rated for his tactical nous in his fledgling managerial career. Hoping that the Welsh effect will help him, the uh, Welshman on home soil here. A short journey comparatively that Bristol have had, some 150 miles shorter than the supporters of Doncaster. And they're in the finishing straight now. One final substitution available, and it is to Bristol Rovers. And it is to be the Bristol-born midfielder, Chris Lines, who's going to come on. Off goes Lewis Haldane. No surprise, that. He no, he's given absolutely everything. He's been terrific. Every time he picked the ball up, he was prepared to run at defenders. 